So at this point, uh, we've developed several tools that we can use uh, to find the roots of polynomials or to factor polynomials. What we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to kind of bring all these together uh, and see how we can use them to completely factor polynomials or solve polynomial equations. So, so let's start by thinking about how we can factor this guy here. Right, so I like to apply Descartes' rule of science first. It's usually, I think, kind of pretty straightforward, uh, at least for finding the positive roots. So if we do that, you'll see we've got one, two, three sign changes here. Right, so that tells me I have to have either three positive roots or one positive root. All right, so what, what else does that tell me? What do I know about the negative and the complex forms? Well, because this is a third degree polynomial, it has at most three roots or three factors, which means if it has three positive ones, then the other two are both going to be zero. Now, if it has one positive root, I, I have two possibilities. One possibility is there are two negative and zero complex. Or the other option is I have two complex and no negative. Now, remember, I couldn't put one over there on the complex side. I, I couldn't have done one, one, and one. Because the complex roots, from the complex conjugate root theorem, they always come in pairs. So that number in the complex column always has to be even. All right, so let's let's do the negative version of the of Descartes' rule of signs, and see if that helps me maybe eliminate one of these two options. All right, so let's see. Um, what do I have to do? I'm going to evaluate the polynomial at negative x. So I'm going to put negative x in here for all of these x's. This becomes negative 6x cubed minus 13x squared minus 9x minus 2. And you see, that did help. Uh, there are no sign changes there, right? Because there are no sign changes, that tells me that there are no negative roots, which means this last column here, uh, this last row, has to be the the one that works for the one positive root. So this one here, this one two zero one, this is not a possibility, All right? So I'm going to have to have either three positive roots, or one positive and two complex ones. All right. So now I'm going to clean up a little. I'm going to make a little space. I'm going to start thinking about the rational root theorem. And what does that tell me? Well, the factors of the constant term are 1 and 2. And the factors of the leading coefficient are 1, 2, and 3. All right. Now, notice I didn't put the negatives on here for this one, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to save myself the effort because I know there are no negative roots. So there's no point in even considering the negative values. All right, so let's, let's see. Now we're, we're going to take the, the ratios here. 1 divided by 1 is 1, right? And I'm going to stop and think, make sure I'm getting these in the right order. 2 divided by 2 is 2. 1 divided by 2 is a half. Here we get 1 third. 2 divided by 2 is 1, but that's a duplicate. And then we have 2 divided by 3. So these are our only possibilities. All right, so now, now I'm, I'm going to apply the remainder theorem, and it's going to be just a, a very brute force kind of situation. I'm taking all, uh, what did I end up with, 5? Five, 5 of these numbers and plugging them in there and seeing what happens. And you can do these by hand. You can go to Excel if, if you like. Um, if you're doing them by hand, start with the easy ones, right? Uh, first, let, let, let me, I'm going to cross this one off just because it, it, that one's a duplicate. The others are all unique. All right, so um, if I take this thing, and I, I'm going to call this P of X. So if I evaluate P of 1, that's 6 times 1 cubed 
minus 13 times 1 squared plus 9 times 1 minus 2. That's 6 minus 13. That's minus 7. Plus 9 is plus 2. Minus 2 is 0. There you go. Awesome. So um, P of 1 is 0. Therefore, X minus 1 is a factor. Right now, uh, you've got two options how you can proceed from here. One is you could divide X minus 1 into that polynomial. If you do that, you're going to get a quadratic polynomial out. And quadratic polynomials are pretty easy to factor. You can always fall back on the quadratic formula if you like. Or you can continue evaluating these, uh, these guys over here and see which ones come out to zero. And if you do that, you should see P of 1 half equals zero. And you should see P of 2 thirds equals zero. So what, what does this tell me in terms of factors? We really don't want to say x equals 1 half, right? I mean, okay, we, we could. But look, remember, right, the original polynomial has all integer coefficients. So I really want to factor this in terms of integers, not fractions. So remember what, what this is saying, this p of 1 half equals zero. This is saying x equals 1 half which is the same as 2x minus 1 equals 0. So this is going to be my factor, 2x minus 1. I'll do the same thing with 2 thirds. This is saying x equals 2 thirds would be a solution of the polynomial equation if this had been equal to 0, which is the same as saying 3x minus 2 equals 0. So that 3x minus 2 is my third factor. So now, now I'm done, right? Three, third degree polynomial. I got three factors. And by the way, notice here, we did end up with three positive roots, just like Descartes' rule of science said we should. So ultimately, my factorization is going to be x minus 1 times 2x minus 1 times 3x minus 2. Remember, this is easy enough to check. You can always multiply that thing out. And if you do, you will end up back with a polynomial we started with. So let's take a look at this one, right? It, it's a little different. Instead of being asked to factor, we're being asked to solve the equation. But remember, when we're talking about polynomials, factoring and roots or solutions to the equation are really tightly bound up with each other. That's really what the factor theorem and the remainder theorem are telling us. So I'm going to apply all of my same tools here. First, I see that I have two sign changes. All right, so Descartes' rule is telling me that one possibility is I have two positive roots. And remember that the complex ones come in pairs. So another, I could have zero, in which case I would have to have two negative ones, right? Fourth degree polynomial, there's going to be four altogether. Or I could have two positive, two complex, and zero negative. Okay. Um, well, we're not done with the positive ones, right? If there can be zero, if there can be two positive, there could also possibly be zero. What possibilities do we have here? Well, I, I could have zero complex roots, in which case all four would have to be negative. I could have two complex roots, in which case there's going to have to be two negative. Or, I could, or all four roots could be complex, in which case I would have zero negative. All right, so let, let's apply the negative version of Descartes' rule and see if we can't narrow that list down a little. I'm just putting negative x in here for every x. And have you noticed what this does? Right, This reverses the sign of every term that had an odd degree. So this x to the fourth stays positive. The x to the third switches and becomes negative. The x squared stays the same. The x switches. And the constant term, which technically is, is an even thing, if it's having a zero exponent, stays the same. All right, so now I see here 
that I have one, two sign changes. All right, so what that's telling me is I have either two negative roots or zero. So that's going to eliminate this option. I know that all four roots are not going to be negative. I'm going to have some, uh, either all four are going to be complex or I'm going to have some mix of positive and negative. All right, so let's see uh, what the rational root theorem tells us. Well, the factors of the constant term are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. And the factors of the leading coefficient are just plus or minus 1. That's nice because that's the denominator. All right, so my possible roots are plus or minus 1 over 1, which is 1, plus or minus 2 over 1, which is 2, and plus or minus 4 over 1, which is 4. So if you test these, Substituting them into the uh, the original here, you should see that p of 2 is equal to 0 and p of negative 2 is equal to 0. Well, this may be a little concerning, right, because I, I got a mix. I got a positive and a negative, and one positive, one negative, and two complex is not on my list. Right, but but that's okay. Let's let's move forward with this, right, and, and see what happens. Um, if two is a root, then x minus two is a factor, and if minus two is a root, then x plus two is a factor. So we're we're making progress towards factoring here, right? This is going to be x minus two times x plus two times something that we still have to figure out. Okay, well, x plus two times x minus two. This is x squared minus 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take x squared minus 4, divide it into the original polynomial there, and what's left is going to go in that, that squiggly line. Now, if you prefer synthetic division, you are welcome to do synthetic division here. You'll have to do it twice. You have to do it once for the 2 and once for the negative 2 because, and this is why I'm not a fan, uh, synthetic division only works when you're dividing a linear polynomial, first degree polynomial, into the larger one. It doesn't work if you want to divide something bigger, like, say, x squared minus 4. All right, so by doing x squared minus 4 instead, I'm going to accomplish this in one pass, and I just don't think it's that much harder. So I'm going to do x squared minus 4 into x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 4. And this better come out even, right? because I know x squared minus 4 is a factor. So I'm going to do x squared here. You multiply, I get x to the 4th minus 4x squared. Then we're going to subtract this, so everybody's signs change. The x to the 4th cancel. Bring down the x cubed. Minus 5 plus 4 is minus x squared. And bring down the minus 4x. So then I'll do plus x. I get x cubed minus 4x. We're going to subtract so everybody's sign changes, and that's nice. right? Both both those parts canceled. And then left with minus x squared plus 4. So we'll do minus x here. We get minus x squared. Uh, excuse me, not minus x. We'll do minus 1. Minus x squared plus 4. We're going to subtract, right? So everybody's sign changes. And that comes out to zero. Excellent. That's what we needed to happen. All right. So that tells me that my remaining factor here is x squared plus x minus 1. Awesome. So now uh, I, I can finish. Sorry. I'm going to pause if you need to, right, if, if you're not done writing. But I need the space over here. Uh, so now what, uh, what do we do? Well, we set the factors equal to zero. If you set x squared minus 4 equal to 0, you get x equals plus or minus 2. And we knew that already, right? We don't, we'd already found those two, which, which is good. Okay, so they're, they're still there. They need to be on our list. Then I've got x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. And you can give it a try if you like, but that does not factor, right? doesn't factor. So uh, we're going to have to use a quadratic formula. I get x equals negative 1 
plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 over 2 times 1. So what, what's happened under that square root? That's, that ends up 1 plus 4. So this is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And there are my answers. x equals plus or minus 2 and negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, good. 4, four 3 polynomial, 4 and 4 solutions. I'm feeling good about that. But Descartes is still looking over our shoulder, right? Did, did, did this work for Descartes' rule of science? Well, look, negative 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 is approximately negative 1.618 sorry negative 1.618 and negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 is positive 0.618 so yes Descartes rule of science worked perfectly I got two negative solutions negative 2 negative 1.618 and positive 2 and positive 0.618. So this is why I picked this one for us to look at. Descartes' rule of signs does not specify that it's only talking about rational roots. Descartes' rule of signs is telling us about the real roots. All right. So what, what we came up with, which which one ended up being being the one that worked, right? It was this one here, right? Two positive and two negative. There are two positive roots. One rational and one irrational and there are two negative roots one rational and one irrational absolutely what Descartes rule of signs told us to expect all right so that that's two good examples and and i know I, the instructional design theory says the videos should be in the neighborhood of 10 to to 12 or 13 minutes and I'm probably coming right up against that now so I'm actually going to stop here but I do have a couple more examples that I want to look at so in the next lecture uh, we're going to look at a couple more of these and then we'll move on to a new topic